I'd like to welcome you on this beautiful uh, Memorial Day weekend to West Valley Christian Church Online. I have to tell you, um, my, the band and I have just been up here for the last 15 minutes just laughing and, and joking around and having fun. And, and I hope that you can feel that spirit uh, where you're at home. I, I know there's a lot of heaviness going on in, in, in a lot of your lives, but you know what? We can have the joy of the Lord in our life at this very moment. And I pray that uh, you, if you don't have a smile on your face, you can, you can put one on there that, uh, that, that today's worship service would would fill your cup and bring you joy and encouragement. If you're joining us for the first time, we want to say welcome, and uh, we would love for you to to join us on our website, uh, wvcch.org, and then click on uh, the box where you can put your contact information, and we'd love to reach out to you and uh, give you a gift. And for everybody else that's a part of this every week, I miss you, and we're so glad that that you're joining us and that the doors may be shut, but the church is still alive. And so let's uh, worship and celebrate our amazing God on this Memorial Day weekend. Come let us worship our King. Come let us worship our King. Come let us bow at His feet. He has done great things. See what our Savior has done. See how His love overcomes. He has done great things. Oh, he 
same God that never fails will not fail me now. You won't fail me now in the waiting. The same God who's never late is working all things out. You're working all things out. Oh yes, I will let you
On this day we remember. We remember your calling. We remember your courage. We remember your sacrifice. We remember your life. We remember what it cost you to pledge your allegiance to your country. Because of you, we can walk in liberty. Because of you, we can sleep in peace. Because of you, the flag is still there. Because of you, this is the land of the free. Because of you, this is the home of the brave. To the families and friends of the heroes we've lost, we salute you. Memorial Day, a day where we remember. It was actually first called Decoration Day. Uh, back in 1866, a group of ladies went to fallen soldiers of the Civil War to go and decorate their, their graves. We lost 618,222 soldiers. If you fast forward to 1971, this day was made a, a federal holiday, and, and we know it today as Memorial Day. It's a day, again, where we remember those that have sacrificed their lives for our freedom. We remember in different ways. Some uh, bring flowers and flags also to gravesides today. We also remember by taking the day off and sometimes hanging out with family and, and having a picnic. We also remember by praying and remembering uh, all those that have sacrificed their lives for us and those that are sacrificing uh, for us. There's different ways in which we remember on this Memorial Day weekend. There's value in remembering. And as we transition into our sermon, our message today, the title is, We Remember. And it's important for us as Christians to remember the reasons that I shared that our country remembers the soldiers and the, the sacrifices that have happened so that we can have freedom. But we have even a greater remembrance as Christians in the church. And that's what we get to focus in on here today. The one in whom sacrificed his life so that we could have freedom. 
And we celebrate and honor that through a thing we call communion. At least that's one of the ways. Let's pray. Father in heaven, thank you. As we've talked about this day of remembrance, this weekend that we call Memorial Day weekend, we do thank you for all the men and women that have sacrificed their lives so that we could have and appreciate the freedoms that we have today. We also want to pray for those that are on the front line, sacrificing in many ways still this day. We pray for them, that you would watch over them, that you would protect them and give them health and safety. God, for this message, I pray that it would fill our cups, that it would renew our hearts, that it would help remind us of why we do this thing called communion at our church every week. God, only you could do this through your Holy Spirit. And it's in his name that we pray, Jesus Christ. Amen. I want to share a scene with you. And I want you to remember, and we'll come back to this scene. It's a cool evening in Florida on one of their beautiful beaches. And as you look out on the scene, you see a, an old rickety pier. And as the sun is beginning to set and it's bright orange that's casking across the ocean, you also, as you zoom in, notice an old gentleman walking down that sandy beach. The only other people you can see are joggers every once in a while running by and splashing their feet through the waters. But as you draw in towards this man, you, you see in his hand, this elderly, weak hand, he's holding a bucket. And in that bucket, it's filled with raw shrimp. You watch this man as he makes his way to the pier. You can hear the sounds of that rickety old wood as he begins to make his way to the very end of that pier. All of a sudden, you notice there's dots in the sky. You're not sure what they are. But again, as they draw closer, you recognize them as seagulls, making their way right towards that old man as he makes his way to the end of that pier. And as they perch on top of that pier, they, looking at that old gentleman with the pail of shrimp in his hands, he begins to, begins to reach over and toss the, the shrimp up in the air. You can see the seagulls catching them and eating them. And you can imagine the smiles on their face. A nice meal delivered to them. What is unusual is the bucket is now empty. But the seagulls still remain. It's almost like they've developed a relationship with this elderly gentleman. Do you have that picture in your mind? I want you to hold on to it as we unpackage today's message we remember. We remember. There's many ways in which to remember our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. But one of the ways the church remembers is, is through an act in which we call communion. Now, some of you have no idea what I'm talking about, and I encourage you to listen in. Some of you, you participate in communion all the time, but you wonder exactly what is it that I'm doing? Like, this is not enough to satisfy my stomach, the cracker and the juice. And some of you know exactly what it is that you're doing. So today's message, I, I want to answer a few questions of what, where did this come from? And, and what can I do while I participate in taking of communion? I want to encourage you to, to grab your Bibles. And I want you to open up to Luke chapter 22. And the first question, uh, the first statement, actually, that I want you to write down is the foundation of communion. Answering, really, the question, what is communion? Where does it come from? And so in Luke chapter 22, we're going to go to verse 7. Luke chapter 22, verse 7. And God's word says this. Then came the day of unleavened bread, on which the Passover lamb had to be sacrificed. Jesus sent Peter and John saying, go and make preparations for us to eat the Passover. Where do you want us to prepare for it? They asked. 
He answered, As you enter the city, a man carrying a jar of water will meet you there. Follow him to the house that he enters. And say to the owner of the house, the teacher asks, Where is the guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large room upstairs, all furnished. Make preparations. This is Jesus' words to his disciples as they prepare for what they called the Passover meal. Now, this might not be familiar to you, but the Passover meal is a significant meal. It's a meal that the Jews do even today in remembrance of their freedom. They would say this is their we remember meal. And at the Passover meal, they remember how they were freed from the heavy hand of Pharaoh from the heavy hand of Egypt and the slavery and, and, and all that that encompassed for them. And so every year they would have this Passover meal and they would prepare for it. And there's so many things about this meal that are so significant. And each thing that they ate and drank had specific meanings, which we don't have time for today. But boy, I'd encourage you to go look it up. Uh, about all the different significance of the Passover meal. But for our purposes today, it was a time for the Jews to remember being set free. Jesus says, we want to have this meal. Let's prepare for it. And he asked his disciples to go before him and, and, and prepare. Here is the foundation that is laid for the message today. If you continue reading on in this story, in Luke chapter uh, 22, verse 14, it says this. When the hour came, so the the, the meal's all there, Jesus and his, uh, his apostles reclined at a table, and he said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. Now imagine The disciples have spent all this time with Jesus, have lived life with him. They know the heat has turned up. But here reality is is coming. Like he is not going to be on this earth much longer with them. And he tells them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. I can't imagine what Peter must have felt in that moment. I can't imagine what Matthew must have felt at that moment. Jesus went on to say, For I tell you, I will not eat it again. There's a finality right there. I will not eat it again until it finds fulfillment in the kingdom of God. Verse 17 says, And after taking the cup, he gave thanks. Can you picture Jesus with the cup in his hand? It says he gave thanks. And he said, take this, divide it among you. For I tell you, I will not drink again from the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And he took the bread (coughs) and said, thanks. And he broke it. And he gave it to them saying, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. But he, <laughs> but, but the hand of him who is going to betray me is with, is with mine on the table. So here's this final Passover meal. Jesus shares with us the emblems of communion. And I have an example of that here, a a, a cup filled with juice. In this case, it's grape juice, Welch's grape juice from Ralph's supermarket. But Jesus had had wine, the the fruit of the vine, and he held that up. And he also held held bread, and and bread that may look a a lot like this. And, And he said, I want you. To, to remember these two things. The bread that represents my body and the juice that represents the blood that's going to be shed for each and every one of you. 
This is where the foundation of communion comes from. We, we also know it as the Lord's Supper. The, again, the juice being the blood that's shed and the bread being the body that is broken. Jesus wants us to remember not just his audience at that moment around that last meal, but he wants us to remember, especially for those of us that, that are Christians, that are Christ followers. It's so important that, that we engage in this each and every week. Now, I know churches do it different ways. Sometimes it's once a year. Sometimes it's once a month. But we believe it's so important here at West Valley that we do it every Sunday. We take time out of our service every week to stop, pause, and remember this moment. Because what this moment really reflects further on, we know that Jesus ends up going to the cross and he dies a horrific death. And there his body, represented by the bre bread, is hung on a cross and goes through a cruel beating so that we could be free. He sheds blood and that juice reminds us of the blood that was shed for us. And so it's not just a cracker and it's not just juice. And there's nothing special about the cracker, by the way, and there's nothing special about the juice. And that's why we even joke sometimes that, man, you could grab some Cheerios or some wheat thins, and, and you could grab some orange juice, or you could grab some water, because what's really important is what we're remembering. And that's that Jesus gave his life for us so that we can be set free. The Jews had the Passover meal so they could be set free from the hand of Pharaoh and the Egyptians. But we take the meal because we are set free. The Bible tells us that we're slaves to sin in Romans. The Bible tells us that we've all fallen short in sin. Every one of us, we're slaves to the sin. But Jesus died on the cross and his blood and his body has set us free. And this is what the significance of communion is for you and I. Again, let me emphasize this. There is nothing magical about this. The juice was bought at Ralph's. The cracker was bought at Costco. <laughs> but it's what we do and how we remember that has great significance. Because like what we talked about last week is letting go of religion. If all we do is drink juice and eat a cracker every week out of habit, we're missing the importance of what Jesus was wanting to get across at this meal. Amen? Amen. So I believe that's the foundation, the Passover meal, Jesus' death on the cross, his resurrection, because we would be not celebrating anything wonderful if Jesus' just death was on the cross and that's it. But we know he conquered death. So, so what is it that we do? Like, Pastor, what is it that you do when you take the cracker and juice? Like, what goes through your mind? I've been asked that a hundred times over the years. And so the rest of this message, I want to share some practical thoughts for you to have during communion. Again, not being legalistic about it. It's really about you and God, and it's about you remembering what Jesus has done for you. But here's some practical um, thoughts for you for the rest of this, this message. And you think about what you do already and how this plays with what Pastor Rob says. Now, before I actually get into those thoughts, I want to share something with you that's significant to me. This is a kava bowl. And... This is from Samoa, and if you know, I've been to Samoa many times. Our church, uh, probably close to 100 people have gone to Samoa from our church. We just have a heart for the Samoan people. And in and, and my hand is what they call a kava bowl. And this, uh, this reminds me of Samoa because kava uh, is something that is part of their community. And you go, Pastor, what are you talking about? All of a sudden we're talking about uh, the heart of communion. You're starting to talk about, uh, you know, what, 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 what it means. I, I want to tell you something that I haven't told you up to this point. The word uh, is koinonia in Greek, which is translated communion. Communion equals 
koinonia. Koinonia is, is community. And really one of the things that happens as we remember uh, at this time of communion, we are having koinonia with God. We are, we are in relationship with God and we're in relationship with those that are around us. And so why I hold up this kava bowl is I think I've been to Samoa 10 times now. Every time I go to Samoa, my team and I are greeted with a kava ceremony. So, so community is very important to the people in Samoa. And so when we pull up in our vans or cars or whatever, and we come out, we're greeted with a bunch of the Samoans from whatever village we're going to. We immediately go into a fale, which is an open room uh, that, uh, with, with a, a thatched roof on it. And all of a sudden, we walk into what we would call a kava ceremony. And you have all the, 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 the high-ranking leaders of the village that are there, the village chief, the talking chiefs, the fifiao, everyone's there. And they do this long ceremony. And basically, what it is, is welcoming us to their table, welcoming us to their community. And all the while, they have a young lady that's all dressed up, and, and she's got this bowl that's about 10 times bigger than this. And the whole time, it looks like she's got a wash rag and she's just squeezing liquid out of it and putting her hands back in the bowl and squeezing it. And what she's really doing is preparing the kava drink, which comes from the kava root. And then eventually the talking chief or or one of the the high ranking officials uh, will come and they'll take a, a, a half of a coconut shell and they'll dip it in there and then they'll walk over to, to somebody and, and, and oftentimes they'll walk over to me as the pastor and, and, and I'm to drink of this. I'm supposed to hold it to my head, pour out a little bit of, of the, the kava to, the, 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 to God as a, as a gratitude, as a, a, a way of showing my thanks for him, and then a way to, to bring in the community, and then I drink it. I, I, I paint that picture because this is a ceremony of koinonia. It's a ceremony of connection and community. And so when you say, Pastor Rob, what do you think of at communion time? I want you to picture that of that being koinonia, you and God connecting again. Maybe that whole week you've kind of walked away from him. Maybe that whole week you've been with him, but it's a time to connect with God. And in that, what do you think of? Well, here's what I want you to do. Write down number one. I want you to write down, look back. Look back. Because this section really is about the heart. It's about um, uh, it's about soul care. And, and there's a teaching that Paul gives uh, on communion in 1 Corinthians chapter 11. And we're not going to get into all of it here. Um, he's actually rebuking. He's actually correcting the church because they're doing it wrong. Uh, a lot of selfish motives, a lot of maybe habit that's involved in it. But let's not look at the negative. Let's look at the positive. So I said the first thing that you can think about is look back. So if you go to 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and you go to verse 23, it says this. For I have received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was portrayed, took bread. So we're going back to what we looked at in Luke. He said this, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup. This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it, in remembrance of who? In remembrance of me. We start off this message with Memorial Day and remembering the soldiers, those who have given their lives for freedom. We talked about the Passover meal and the Jews and how important that's to them. But here we land. We land at remembering at this meal that could be called the Lord's Supper. It could be called communion. It's a time of koinonia. But one of the things that we think of as we drink and as we partake in that cracker is we look back. We remember Jesus' death on the cross. We remember his resurrection. We remember him paying in full our debt for the craziness that we have committed maybe that week or that month or that moment. So one of the things I do during communion time is is reflect. I look back on what Jesus did for me and I say thank you. The second thing I think of is not just looking back, but looking up and looking forward. If you look at the passage, Paul continues to to teach. He says, so uh, in verse 26, for whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, listen, listen, whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim, 
you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Have you ever thought about that when you're taking communion? Yeah, it's great to think about what Jesus has done and the the death and the burial and the resurrection, wonderful. But, But Paul is saying one of the things that we could do as we remember is we need to remember he's coming back. And I think some of us have forgotten that. The truth is, and I seem to be saying this a lot more lately because some of us are getting trapped into all the junk that's going on in this world, but especially those of us that are Christ followers, we don't need to have our head in the sand. When I read this book, it says we've won. We've won. We, we, we may not be, be, be winning the battles, but we've won the war. It's good news. And Jesus said in Acts chapter 1 to, to, to the men that are kind of freaking out because he's no longer there. He's ascended into heaven. He says, men of Galilee, why, what, what are you so afraid of? Why are you looking in the, eye, the air? The same Jesus, the same Jesus that ascended into heaven is coming back. And I want to remind you that during communion, yes, we could look back at what Jesus has done, but we could look forward and up to the hope that's in store for each and every one of us in heaven. Who needed to hear that? I know I did. It's a time of hope. It's a time of anticipation. It's a time of heaven. It's a time of reminding me that this world is not my home. I'm just passing through. It's a time to say thank you, Jesus. And lastly, it's a time to look inward. It's a time to look inward. So we've looked back. We've looked forward and up. But communion is a time to look inward. Where do you grab that from, Pastor? Well, let's continue reading in our passage. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 27. So then, whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning against the body and the blood of the Lord. Everyone, here it is. If you have your Bibles in your hand, I, I just think this is a passage you should underline. Everyone, which means all of us, Everyone ought to examine themselves before they eat of the bread and drink from the cup. This is why I say, look inward. It's a time of reflection. It's a time of repentance. It's a time of confession. It's examining our hearts. It's asking these kind of questions. How how have I honored God this week? And you could reflect in the good ways that you've done it, but it's also a time of reflection of saying, you know what? My mind wasn't where it needed to be. I did not honor God with my mind. And be specific if you can. Or I did not honor God with my tongue. Be specific. I I didn't honor God with my time. Or I just kind of basically kicked them to the back. It's a time to just be real with God. He can handle whatever it is that you're going to tell him. Because by the way, listen, he already knows. And just like a child that comes and shares their weakness with you, that lets you know that they had done something wrong, whether you knew it or not, knew it or not, as a parent, there's something special about that, isn't there? When your child comes with a heart filled with sorrow or desire to change, that's, what, that's what's a beautiful thing about this meal with, with God, about this koinonia with God, about this communion time with God. It's a time where, again, we can reflect. It's a time where we can repent. It's a time, it's a time where we could move the burden from our heart to his. Each one of these, I could spend an entire sermon on that I just shared, the thoughts. But I hope these are helpful for you. 
as you partake in the cracker, as you partake in the juice, it's a time that we could look back, we could look up, forward, and we could look inward. Again, every week is not filled with all of those elements during my time with the Lord of partaking in this amazing meal called communion. But elements of these are there. What do you do? And could some of these things be something that you could also implement? Again, Paul's instruction right here were the three ways in which we could do this. I want to close. And I left you with a scene of an older man at the end of a pier. In Max Licato's book, In the Eye of the Storm, he writes this. The old man on the pier couldn't go a week without saying thank you. His name? It's Eddie Rickenbacker. If you were alive in October of 1942, you probably remember the day that he went missing. He had uh, been sent on a mission to deliver a message to General Douglas MacArthur with a hand-picked crew in a B-17 known as the Flying Fortress. He set off course across the South Pacific. Somewhere, the crew became lost. The fuel ran out and the plane went down. All eight crew members escaped into a life raft. They battled the weather, the water, the sharks, and the sun. But most of all, they battled the hunger. You see, after eight days, their rations were gone. They ran out of options. It would take a miracle to survive. And a miracle occurred. After an afternoon devotional service, the men said a prayer and, and tried to rest. As, as Rickenbacker was dozing uh, with, a, with, with his hat over his eyes, something landed on his head. He would later say that he knew it was a seagull. He didn't know how, he just knew. The goal, the seagull, meant food. If, if, and only if, he could catch it. And he did. The flesh was eaten. The intestines were used as fish bait. And the crew survived. What was a seagull doing hundreds of miles from the land? Only God knows. But whatever the reason, Rickenbacker was thankful. And as a result, every Friday evening, this old captain walked to the end of the pier with his his bucket full of shrimp, and his heart full of thanks. But Cato goes on to say this. We, as Christians, would do well to do the same. Rickenbacker's story that I just shared is a story of a man that would go often to feed the seagulls who saved his life. He remembered. Communion is we remembering. It's you remembering. So, I encourage you to get your communion emblems right now or elements. Uh, Again, some of you have been stopping by the church and getting the portable ones. Uh, I have a big glass filled here today and I've got my bread And so if you could grab that, uh, maybe again, whatever you have in your home. And if you've made the decision to have Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, you get to partake in this meal. And if you haven't yet, now you know why us Christians do this. Again, nothing special about the actual cracker and the juice. It's, It's what we remember. And it's our heart and our way to honor God. And if you haven't made that decision, please reach out to us through the online chat room that if you're watching us right now or go to our website and just say, man, I'd love for a pastor to contact me so I could get to know about who this Jesus is. But I want to say a prayer right now as we begin to partake in this Lord's Supper in communion. Will you bow your heads, please? 
Father God, thank you. Thank you for that Passover meal that we got to read about. Thank you for your son teaching us today about the importance of this meal. And God, I thank you that we're a part of a church that does this every week. And sometimes when we do something every week, it becomes a habit. And Lord, forgive us if it's, this has become a habit. But my prayer would be that today this would be a reminder of what the significance is. I, I pray, God, for all of those that are partaking in, in the bread and the juice, that you would bless these sacraments, and God, that you would bless the person taking them. We remember. We look back. We look forward. We look in. In the powerful name of Jesus, amen. At this time, I'd encourage you to partake the bread that represents his body and the juice that reminds us of the blood that is shed for us. Thank you, Jesus. As we get to take this time to remember Christ, we just heard a wonderful message about remembering him and what he has done for us. I want to share this song with you called In Christ Alone. I pray that this service has given you an opportunity to remember what he has done, to remember the hope that we have in Jesus, to remember that he is our strength time of need. He's our help. He's our everything right now. So as we sing this song and think of what Jesus did, I just pray that you're encouraged and that you can claim Christ today and allow him to lead you through this week. He's here. Yeah. 
death of Christ I come to our time of offering, just want to remind you that there's four different ways you can give. They're on the screen, uh, but you could text 77977. Uh, you could give on the church app. You could go on the church's website, which is www.wbcch.org, or you can mail in a check to the church address at 22450 Sherman Way. Uh, let's pray as we come to the time of offering. Father, we love you. We thank you so much for your blessings. We thank you for the way you have washed over us as individuals. We thank you for the way you have washed over our church. And we pray that you would just use uh, these tithes and these offerings, Lord, to build your kingdom and to continue to glorify you with everything that we give. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hi, everyone. I'm Kara, a member here at West Valley Christian Church, where we exist to love God and love people. And here are your announcements. Men of West Valley, it's time for the virtual men's breakfast. On Saturday, June 6th, John Stahlberger will be hosting a virtual men's breakfast on Zoom at 9 a.m. If you sign up ahead of time, food will be available for you to pick up at the connecting place between 8 and 8.30 a.m. Remember, if you want food, you will need to sign up ahead of time. You can sign up on the church website on the Contact Us form or on the link in our newsletter. We hope you've all been enjoying the online church experience. It's also a great opportunity to invite your friends and family. We all know that just because a building has the word church on it and has a big, beautiful cross lit up on it, it does not mean that it's healthy. In our next series, Healthy Church, we will be taking a look at a letter focused exactly on that. What does it mean to have a healthy church? And those are all the announcements I have for you today. If you're new to us, we are so glad you decided to join us online. And we would love for you to make West Valley your church home. Have a great week. So how is your heart? I sure hope it's uh, filled at a higher level than it was when you first joined us an, an hour ago. I'm praying that God has, has filled it with more hope uh, with more courage, uh, with more purpose. And I hope that you understand communion in a, in a different way or maybe a clearer way. And uh, maybe uh, from here on out, uh, not maybe, I hope that uh, this will help you to have some things to think about as you partake in this meal and understand the significance of it. I look forward to starting our new sermon series next week and I hope that you'll join us. Uh, God bless you and have a great week.